One of the other common types of, of patients referred to our esophageal and airway program uh, at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital is called a recurrent TEF or recurrent tracheoesophageal fistula. This means this is occurring in a, a child that was born with esophageal atresia uh, that included a, a tracheoesophageal fistula. So in that, in that condition, uh, the baby was had esophageal treated to begin with, but required that to be repaired. So that meant disconnecting the lower esophagus from the trachea and making a connection to the upper esophagus. So ideally that leads to an esophageal connection here that heals and there's the, the original site on the trachea where there was uh, a tracheoesophageal fistula that it is sutured off. When you get a recurrent TEF, what has happened is this esophageal connection didn't heal well and you get a leak and that leak can cause inflammation into the closure of the TEF. And so you end up with a connection of the esophagus and trachea again. And so now it would, uh, it would be a side connection like this. So when you have that problem, uh, any uh, saliva in the esophagus or food you eat or, or, or stuff that you drink can go into the airway and contribute to infections. The, the rate of having this type of complication from an esophageal treasure repair is probably in the 5 to 10 percent range, uh, which thankfully is, is low. Unfortunately, historically the complication rate for trying to fix this uh, actually is higher. Uh, historically, the complication rate for repairing that is actually goes up to 20 or 25 percent to have it come back again. Um, so now you're for a third time having that fistula. Uh, however, um, starting in about two, uh, around 2012, we were able to develop uh, a new a surgical technique to repair a recurrent tracheoesophageal fistula that uh, has basically uh, eliminated the, the risk of recurrence. And uh, so how, how that works, uh, this would be uh, like a cross-sectional view of this same problem. So this would be like you're looking down the barrel of, of the trachea and, and esophagus. So this would be the trachea and the esophagus. And, and this is the recurrent TEF here. Uh, and right behind the esophagus uh, is the spine. The technique that we were able to develop to repair these is once you separate this again, or separate that here, is we now move the esophagus off to the side and pull the trachea back to the spine. So then that uh, turns into looking like this. If this is the spine, the trachea has been pulled back here. The esophagus is now off to the side with its closure here. So now we have separated the TEF and by, by suturing the trachea to the spine, a procedure called a posterior tracheopexy, that basically hides that tracheal suture line closure uh, so that the two can't uh, reconnect into another fistula again. That even if the esophagus leaks again, it can't get back into the trachea. Uh, this, of course, later revolutionized our thinking of how to treat tracheomalacia, because this is how we developed the, the procedure of a posterior tracheopexy. Uh, and it turns out the, the overwhelming majority of babies that have a recurrent TEF also have severe tracheomalacia at that level. And so uh, by this approach, you can not only repair the TEF and have a zero recurrence risk, but you uh, improve the tracheomalacia uh, uh, and the floppiness of the trachea to a dramatic degree. Now you can still have issues with the esophagus depending on how bad that aspect of the problem is. Some kids with this problem actually can have a long stricture and so uh, sometimes you still have to figure out the best way to reconstruct the esophagus separately. 
Um, uh, but for the majority of, of cases, we can actually just do a direct repair of the esophagus and have, have a great long-term result with that. Um, the thing that's scary about recurrent tracheoesophageal fistula operations, um, not scary to us, but in general, is that surgeons with not a lot of experience doing reoperative esophageal surgery, they, when you're operating in that area, there's a lot of scar tissue, there's a lot of inflammation, and there's a risk that you could damage or injure the airway more than it already is, uh, which can lead to life-threatening problems. So uh, I think it's good that people don't take it lightly. Um, but it also means that historically, uh, surgeons have taken just a more minimal approach to try to avoid that, uh, but in the process are, are using techniques that ultimately still have a high recurrence rate and so you're not getting to a great long-term solution. Um, but at the program here, uh, our, our surgeons, myself, Dr. Shea, Dr. Jennings, we, uh, we, we commonly do redo soft gel surgery on a routine basis. So we can confidently just take our time and uh, separate these structures and get a nice uh, long-term repair with a good long-term result. <laughs>